Hello everybody and welcome back to another Marvel Crisis Protocol reveal breakdown. Today we are taking a look at Abomination who was released earlier today. I'm very very excited about this one. Haven't read through any of this document yet so um, yeah this is mostly going to be all fresh to me. I don't think we've had pretty much anything revealed about this guy yet so I'm really really excited because this is definitely one of those models that I've been looking forward to since we got the Hulk way back in literally the uh the first release or i guess for me really since i started playing the game because that was that was before i was playing but um yeah let's uh let's dive right into things here so they do have this awesome art here him facing off against immortal hulk they did say they'd kind of designed the models to fight each other which is really really cool um but yeah so we get the blurb here where they're talking about his uh you know his backstory and stuff like that um, but what we're here for is the stack card here. So let's go ahead and break this down. Alrighty. So Mr. Emil Blonsky is coming in with four, three, three defensively. He's going to have seven stamina and is a five threat. So he is a little bit lower threat than your average Hulk here. Um, so yeah, worth, worth keeping in mind, assuming he's going to have somewhat similar abilities. Um, that's, it's going to be interesting to kind of see how he works as a five threat and noticeably right out the gate, we can see he does have a flip side. So again, not like the other Hulks, he's going to have a flip side. He's not just going to have like this massive stamina pool you have to drain down. Um, so yeah, really interesting to see how they chose to go with that. He is a size four like the other Hulks, but he is a medium mover. So he's actually a little bit faster than the others. And I think he's still on that large base there. So, um, probably one of the faster Hulks that we have so far. Next, we go into his attacks here, and the first one is just a basic strike. This is going to be a range 2 7 dice physical attack that notably looks like it is a gainer instead of a builder, so he's only going to gain one power for these, um, so so that's definitely worth acknowledging. Uh, I actually quite like that. I find the inconsistency on, on Hulk's builders can be very annoying sometimes, so that's always nice to see. Um, coming in with a wild poison here, so he's going to throw out some poison conditions, alrighty. And a wild hit push. So he's not pushing quite as consistently as, let's say, the Hulk is. But uh, he is a threat lower, so that kind of makes sense. And uh, it is going to be a way small, but it is going to be any size. So yeah, still a really, really solid push there. Going into his next attack here, he has the Hurl Debris attack. This is a range 3, 5 dice. That's also a gainer with no rules text. So just giving you a little bit more of a ranged option if you need it. That's nice to see. Always, always appreciate when they have stuff like that. And it is another zero cost. So, you know, you can you can probably get that off uh, relatively consistently turn one. But it is, of course, only a five dicer. So not quite as hard hitting. Next, you have the Gamma Bomb Spender attack. This is going to cost you four power. It's going to be a range three eight dice physical attack. So all physical here. Uh, after the attack is resolved, if it dealt damage, the target character gains the poison condition. All right. So a little bit more consistent version of what he has going on with the strike here. After the attack is resolved, place this character within one of the target character. All right, teleports, teleports over to them. Cool, cool. And then a wild throw, uh, size four or less, any direction small uh, before damage is dealt. So that's always nice to have as well. Um, yeah, that seems like a really solid spender. Not quite as big of a dice increase um, as, as you might expect for four power. But with the relatively consistent throw, um, you know, wild, still not guaranteed, but you should get that most of the time. Um and then, you know, the auto poison in the place, there's there's a few reasons to, to pick that move that aren't just dice. So yeah, that's that's pretty solid. Next, he has his first active super power here is I'm the strongest there is. This is a three cost. Choose a terrain feature of size four or less within range two and throw it long. Okay. Um, the super can only use once per turn. So no character throw it looks like outside of his attacks here, but being able to uh to, to throw Train long is is always pretty good, and size four is also pretty good. So yeah, good good way to get some extra damage in with him here. Next, he has radiation zone. This is a three cost. Each enemy character within range two with the poison special condition suffers two damage. Then each enemy character within two gains the poison special condition. Okay, cool. So if they're already poisoned, auto damage. Great, fantastic. If not, they're going to be poisoned. And then each character that gained the poison special condition in this way loses one power. The super can be used only once per turn. Okay, that's really cool. That's actually, that's a really neat superpower. I'm super down for that. Uh, three cost with only builders means he's probably not going to be doing it too, too often because I feel like he's going to be wanting to use that throw quite often. But um, still, yeah, that's a, that's a really, really solid, uh, really solid superpower. And honestly, that is a poison that I'm suddenly scared of. So yeah, I can immediately see some synergies with, you know, 
maybe stuff like Strucker Hydra or um, maybe Apocalypse, but you got to be careful there because obviously he's probably not going to be one of the servants of Apocalypse. Anyways, next we have Gamma Mutated Hide. When this character would suffer damage from an enemy effect, reduce the amount suffered by one to a minimum of one. After the effect is resolved, if he suffered damage, he gains one. Ooh, so he's got a damage reduction and an ornery. Okay, that's going to help with his power generation in a big way. Um, yeah, no notes. That's just really good. Uh, seven, seven stamina, DR by one. Um, yeah, I that's, that's really solid defensive tech. And then he also has irradiated strength here. During the power phase, he gains one additional power. So yeah, starting out at two every turn, that's really going to help you make sure you're able to actually do your throw and your spender once in a while, um, even if your opponent's not punching you. So yeah, I, I like that a lot. Lastly, he is immune to poison, which kind of makes sense given how much his kit kind of revolves around it. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, I really, really like this. This is a really solid start to this character. Um, lack of mobility is definitely going to be a thing with him. No Gamma Leap or anything like that. But um, yeah, I think he looks really, really cool. Taking a peek at the flip side of his card here. Let's see if anything obvious changes. Uh, still 7 stamina, looks like the defensive stats are the same, all of this appears to be the same to me, if I miss anything please do let me know, uh, but that means this guy coming in with 14 stamina and a damage reduction, I'd actually make the argument that he might be bulkier than, um, you know, maybe not quite bulkier than Hulk, but he's at least roughly the same level, um, you know, Hulk has his reroll, but it's really expensive and hard for him to use that frequently, so... Yeah, I, I really, really like this. Alrighty, continuing on, I'm pretty sure there's a few cards in here as well. Uh, just skimming through this, it looks like they're just kind of talking about the um, the, the the different abilities he has and, and what they do and stuff like that, so that's cool. Uh, and then we get to what looks to be his first tactics card here, and this is Gamma Burst. So let's see what this is all about. It's unaffiliated active card. During his activation, Abominations may spend three power to play this card. Push each enemy character with the poison special condition and within range 2 of Abomination away medium. Each pushed character suffers 1 damage. Alrighty, I really, really like that. I mean, that's a that's a great distance for the push. You're going to be dealing a bunch of plank damage. Um, it's almost, I mean, not quite, but it's almost better than throwing them because they can't brace that. That's just, that's just take a damage. They can use Indom, I guess, to, to prevent it. Um, but yeah, if you've got six power, this is a really solid way to just be kind of like, you know what, this this point here, this is mine, and also everyone else here is taking damage. Because um, yeah, you, 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 know, you pay three radiation zone, make everyone poisoned, and then shove them all away. It's going to be really, really good on like e-maps and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I, I like that quite a lot, so... Yeah, Gamma Burst is a is a really cool card. I, I'm down with that. Continuing to scroll down here, uh, we get his next one here, which is You Will Do As I Say, Monster. This is a unaffiliated active card that looks like it's a team-up card with either version of MODOK during George Tarleton's activation. If he is within range 2 of an allied abomination, he may spend 5 power to play this card. Okay, so Modok's playing the card, he's spending 5 power for it, and he's throwing abomination medium. Wow, I love this. Okay, um, I don't know how often you're actually going to be using this, I don't know how good this actually is for 5 power, but that is really, really nice. Being able to just send abomination uh, over towards your opponent, say, hey, eat a size 4 to the face, also there's an abomination in your face now, seems really, really fun. Uh, presumably they're going to be sharing a few affiliations. My my expectation is Cabal, and we'll see where else he is. But um, yeah, that's that's really really cool. And yeah, I'm I'm down for that. That's that's a cool team up card that I think is actually probably reasonably solid. Uh, time will tell how good that actually is because it is a five cost uh, card. But I I do really really like that. So yeah, I'm I'm super down with that. All right, so scrolling down just a little bit more. Uh, it does look like they're actually giving us some hints to his affiliations here. So I want to read this somewhat carefully because I'm actually seeing, so Abomination and Modoc Scientist Supreme share the Criminal Syndicate and Hydra affiliations. So that's a confirmation that he's going to be in Crimson and Hydra. However, he is specifically talking about the shared synergy, or um, shared affiliations with this version of Modoc, which is only Modoc 2. Um, so, you know, I, I believe that's all of the affiliations Modoc 2 is a member of, so that doesn't rule out other places, um, it's just saying that he happens to share those with Modoc 2. I'm hoping that means he's still going to be Cabal and he's still going to share that with Modoc 1, 
Um, I don't really see him being in more than that, but that would be that would be really really cool. So yeah, I'm I'm super down with him being Crimson and Hydra though. That's that's great. That's I think he's potentially really really good for for both of them. Um, yeah, I I really like this. This is this is just something that uh, yeah I I was gonna be excited about this model pretty much no matter what. And he's super cool. They got a cool shot of him here with the Wrecking Crew. And um, yeah, so the mentions that they're going to be adding Mu Muscle to Criminal Syndicate. So that's also a bit of a confirmation, um, confirmation for Wrecking Crew. Um, Hydra mentioned Strucker. I already mentioned that. Um, so wait, his leadership Hydra High Council? Is Strucker's leadership called Hydra High Council? I never, never acknowledged that before. Um, but yeah, so they're talking about that there. And then um yeah they're just talking about the leadership so they're not mentioning anywhere else he might be affiliated i'm holding out hope that he's cabal because that kind of feels like the most obvious place for him but they've been making some interesting choices with affiliations lately so who knows um uh, but that does look like it's going to be the end of the article here there's nothing else um so yeah i'm still super excited about this character uh i i think abominations i mean abominations just really cool i've wanted to kind of have that you know, that model to face off with Hulk for a long time now, and I think Abomination, they they knocked it out of the park with the sculpt, he looks super cool, really, really excited to pose him up against uh, Immortal Hulk, and even regular Hulk, um, yeah, I, I think he's just really, really neat, um, I've got a, I've got a proxy ready to go for him, so, so hopefully coming to a, uh, coming to a battle report near you guys soon, now that we've got a stack card, um, I'll, I'll be able to, to get him on the table, but, um, yeah, I'm super excited about this guy. I think he's looking really, really cool. And I hope you guys are excited about him too, because I mean, I ideally <laughs> ideally, you know, he's he's hitting what everyone wants him to hit. So yeah, but super happy so far. So I was curious and I wanted to check into it just to be uh just to be sure. Obviously there's no real confirmation on anything because we haven't had the panel to play for the wrecking crew yet either, and they are sharing a box. But looking at the pre-order information for these two characters, uh, first of all, that actually kind of makes him look like he's on a medium base, so maybe, we'll see. Um, but secondly, uh, it does state that it's coming with four Team Tactics cards, so we have only seen two of the ones in the box. Now, it's very, very possible the other two are just for the Wrecking Crew, um, but just worth kind of throwing that out there that there are two more to come, so... You know, those might be uh, Abomination cards, those might be Wrecking Crew cards, those might even be Affiliation cards for Criminal Syndicate or something like that. Um, so just kind of worth acknowledging that this definitely isn't everything in the box. Um, we're going to have to see the Wrecking Crew panel to play to, to get the rest of that. Because I don't think they did the panel to play for them yet. I know they've revealed their stack card already, um, but I don't think we've actually had the proper transmission yet for it. But that is going to do it for this uh, panel to play breakdown here. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think about Abomination. I'm super excited for him, mainly just because the model is sick, and I do really like, you know, he's just this big bulky man throwing a bunch of dice. That's fun. So I definitely look forward to playing with him. I think his poison synergies are really, really cool, and I think he's definitely going to be interesting in Strucker Hydra, so I'm definitely going to try that out. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm super excited about this guy, this guy here. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Very, very curious to hear what everyone's thoughts are on him but I think he's really cool at least. So um, yeah, hopefully you guys agree. But if not, let me know, let me know what you were expecting, what, what, you're, uh, what you were hoping he, he would have had on him. Um, but that is going to do it for my part. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please do drop a like down below. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. We break down all the new stuff as it comes out. We also have some regular, more discussion focused content on the weekdays and battle reports on the weekends. So if you're a fan of any of that stuff, feel free to jump on in. But that's going to do it for this video. So until next time, have a great day, everybody. Peace.